So here is the final part of this objective for this lesson, and that is being able to solve rational inequalities. Rational inequalities. Okay, so let's flash back a little bit here and review how to solve quadratic inequalities, because they're going to be very, very similar. So solving quadratic inequalities with one variable. So I don't have a y here. I just have, just say, an x. Um, it was kind of like solving linear inequalities. In other words, it was going to be graphed on a, a number line. It's not going to graph on x, y coordinate plane. And it was also like absolute value inequalities in that it involved either an and inequality or an or inequality. Something in between the two numbers or on the outside of the two numbers. Okay, so um, what we looked at is a simple, simple one. x squared is greater than or equal to 25. What most people want to do is just take the square root of both sides and have x is greater than or equal to 5, or maybe even plus or minus 5, but that doesn't make sense. So instead, what we do is we solve a corresponding equation. We make it an equation instead of an inequality x squared is equal to 25, and then you solve that and you get plus or minus 5. Okay, now how we deal with that is that those two numbers are called our critical values. What critical values just mean, on a graph, they're the important points. They're usually boundary points, they're the important points of the graph, and what they're going to be for us are the boundary of our inequality, maybe in between the two numbers or on the outside of those numbers. Okay, so we take those numbers and we put them on a number line. I got a negative 5 and I got a positive 5. It might be stuff that's in between there or on the outside. It breaks it up into three intervals. So I have smaller than negative 5, I've got greater than positive 5, or I have everything that's in between negative 5 and 5. I have to figure out which ones make that thing true. So if I take 0 and I plug 0 in here, 0 squared, is that greater than or equal to 25? No, 0 is not greater than 25. So it can't be the green part of this. It must be the stuff that's on the outside of it. So I write that, of course, as x is less than or equal to negative 5 or greater than or equal to positive 5. Okay, and it's a great or inequality, right? Great or. That was the little shortcut. Okay, so let's look at the flip side of this. Is if x squared is less than or equal to 24. Well, if I plug the 0 in this time, of course I get 0 squared is less than or equal to 25, and it checks out. So the green part is the part that I want. It's everything in between negative 5 and 5. Negative 5 is less than or equal to x, is less than or equal to 5, and it's an and inequality. Okay, still reviewing a bit here. Um, another way that we thought of quadratic inequalities is to think of it as a two-dimensional graph that gets crunched down to the number line. So instead of thinking of x squared minus 4 is less than 0, think of x squared minus 4 is less than y. And you're going to graph that as a parabola like this. Just, just take a look, right? So I know that this makes a parabola. This is down towards the parent function. And this is y is greater than all that, so that means that I have to shade up above that thing. All right, and now I need to uh, collapse this thing down and just take the part where it touches the x-axis. And that's the part that I get to keep. That's the answer. So in between negative 2 and 2. All right, that's, now we're going to do all of that stuff with quadratic, not quadratic, rational inequalities. Okay, so here's the other side of it. If it's greater than, at this time it's going to be shaded down below. Um, why, if I read it from the left-hand side, y is less than all of that, so it's down below. And then, of course, collapse it down to just the x-axis, and that's the part that I get to be, keep. So there's another interpretation of quadratic inequalities. So, now, here's the stuff that we want. We're finished with the review. Now we're talking about rational inequalities. So solving rational inequalities is very similar to what I just reviewed with you. Very similar to solving quadratic inequalities. In that, you're trying to look for some critical values. Okay? So the solution to, those, to the inequality is going to be either between or on the outside of those critical values. 
So when I solve these, here's the three steps. Step number one, you want to make it equal zero. You don't solve an, equ an inequality, you solve an equation. Make it equal to zero, okay? And then find the critical values. Question is, how do you find the critical values for these rational inequalities? Ah, uh, I'm not going to tell you just yet. Anyway, after you find those critical values, you're going to put them on a number line and use some test values to tell, is it going to be in between them or is it going to be on the outside of those things? Okay, so let me go back to number two. How the heck are you supposed to find those critical values? And there's two ways to get critical values here. The first one is, Wherever the numerator is equal to zero, that's going to give us the first set of critical values, okay? That's essentially, like when I'm going to look at a graph in a little bit, it's going to be the same thing as the x-intercepts of the graph. And a graph, when it touches the x-axis, it could be equal to that point, so I could have less than or equal to or greater than or equal to on those points. The second place that I can get some critical values from is where the denominator is equal to zero. Okay, so the denominator is equal to zero. What, what this gives me are something called asymptotes, vertical asymptotes. And this whole entire vertical asymptotes, that's what the next lesson is going to be about. And it's going to be super, super interesting. Um, just wait and see. Okay. The, the thing about the vertical asymptotes, where the denominator is equal to zero, that's division by zero, so it can't actually be equal to those numbers. So even if your original inequality has a, a greater than or equal to sign on it, you'd have to take it off for those values. Okay, so I'm going to set the thing equal to zero. I'm going to find the critical values, and I find them by looking at where does the top equal zero and where's the bottom equal zero. And then the third step is to put all of those things on a number line and pick out, like, the intervals. What, which ones make this, the original inequality make sense? Let's try that on exercise eight here. Step number one was to make this thing equal to zero. Well, in order to make it equal to zero, I've got to get this negative four out from this side of the inequality. So let's get this over here onto the left-hand side, so 6 over x minus 2 plus 4 is equal to 0. Now, I don't want to, I do not want to just multiply by the common denominator here, because remember, where I'm going to get some of my, um, my critical values is where the denominator equals to 0. So I want to just go ahead and add this side up. Add it up, okay? So I need a common denominator. There's only one denominator. It must be x minus 2. So I'm going to multiply the 4 times x minus 2 on both the top and the bottom. Okay, so my new equation becomes 6 over x minus 2 plus 4 times x minus 2 over x minus 2 equals 0. Let's add up the tops. Of course, I want to distribute here. I get 4x minus 8. Combine that with the 6. The top of this becomes 4x minus 2 over x minus 2 equals 0. So here is where I'm going to get the critical values from. Let's switch colors again. Critical values. Let's go with green. Critical sounds just like green. The first place I'm going to get them is from where the top is equal to 0. So I go 4x minus 2 equals 0. Add the 2 over. 4x is equal to 2. So x is equal to 2 divided by 4 is 1 half. There's one critical value. OK. Now, let's uh, do the same thing on the bottom. Wrong button. This one. And I need another color. How about purple? where the bottom is equal to 0. So x minus 2 is equal to 0, so x has got to be equal to 2. So here I only have two critical values. Let's put those things on a number line and decide, is it going to be in between those two numbers or going to be on the outside of those two numbers? Switch back to blue, of course, because that's the official color of this lesson. OK, number line, 0, 1 half, put a 2 here. Open circles or closed circles? On the one half, 
it came from where the top was equal to zero. And that means that it could be equal to that value as long as the original inequality had an equal sign on it. And it does. So the number one half can get a closed circle. The number two, on the other hand, came from where the bottom is equal to zero. If x was equal to two in this original thing, it would make two minus two a zero down the bottom, and you can't have that. So this always gets an open circle, no matter that uh, this thing has an equal sign under it or not. Okay, so now a quick test value. Which one should we choose? How about zero? Let's plug zero in there and see if it works. I would have, let's go with the one that is all, yeah, I can just do the original one. Okay, six over zero minus two, that is six over negative two, which is negative three. Is that greater than or equal to four? It is not, which means, which means, this is, oh, whoa, 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 back that up, back that up, that's a negative four, negative four. Is negative three greater than or equal to negative four? Yes, it is. Whoo, almost made a critical error right there. Critical, critical value, anyway. Anyway, so it does include that part. It is this part shaded, and it is that part shaded couldn't have been the stuff that's on the inside, so the opposite of the inside is just the stuff on the outside there. So I'll write this in interval notation as negative infinity up to one half, it gets a bracket, union, parentheses, two, positive infinity. There's my final answer. Whew, lovely. All right, um, so let's take a look at this graphically. So just like I did with the quadratic ones, I want you to see why we're actually using, like what the critical values actually are for this graph. And the graph for this will make a lot more sense after the next couple of lessons when we learn how to graph these things. Okay, so instead, think of this, like go ahead and get the four over, and instead of making that equal to zero, make that y. Okay, so there's exactly how I simplified it on the left-hand side, but now we have that is greater than or equal to y. And now we graph this. So here I had Geometer Sketchpad graph this for us. The red line, the vertical one, is a vertical asymptote. It comes from where the bottom is equal to zero. Okay, so that's two. The horizontal dashed line, that's called a horizontal asymptote. And there's a couple of ways in order to get it. I won't talk about that in this lesson because uh, it's not what this is about. And then the other, the actual graph looks like this. Whoa, look at that. It's the purple thing. The purple thing is the graph. Okay, so now I have to add my shading. Y, if I read it from the left-hand side, Y is less than all of that. So I am going to shade down below. Everywhere I see my graph, less than that would be down below the graph. Okay. So now look at, to see where the shading hits the x-axis. So I have the 1 half, and it's everything to the left of it. I have the 2, and it's everything to the right of it. It's those two places, collapse the whole thing down, and there's the exact same answer that we got before. x was less than or equal to negative 1 half, or x was greater than 2. That, that was pretty All right. I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, I need two of those to do myself because I really, really want to try those all by myself. So pause it and give those two a try then. All right, I hope you had a bit of fun with this and uh, here are your solutions on these two problems. All right, so the left one, maybe it's a little bit more straightforward because, uh, well, it was already pretty much equal to zero. You didn't have to combine any fractions or whatever. So you just had to set the top equal to zero, which means that you had to factor, and you get critical values of three and negative two. Okay, and then you set the bottom equal to zero down here in red, and I get a critical value of one. This time I have three critical values. Okay, put them all on a number line. That's what I see down here in purple. And uh, what I did is I, I tried a test value of the number zero. So back in the original one, I put zero in there. It made six is less than or equal to zero, which is not true, so I can't have this part, so it must be shaded on the outside of the negative two, 
and then on the outside of 1, and of course it's going to stop at the other critical value of 3. So in purple right there, there's my final answer in interval notation. Okay, at number 2, you did have to add the 2 over first, get a common denominator, which is just simply x minus 1, and then combine it, and hey, look, it simplifies down pretty nicely, 5x over x minus 1. Hey, same denominator, what do you know about that? Didn't, oh, interesting. So the top equals 0, I get x equals 0 for my first critical value. The bottom equal to 0, I get x equals 1 as my critical value. Um, oh, um, one thing I, I think I forgot to say on the top here, the 3 and the negative 2, they got to be colored in because they were from the top, which they can be equal to since it has an equal sign on this one. Here when I put these two numbers on there, it doesn't matter. Both of these can't be equal to it because it just has a, a straight less than sign on it. Okay, and then um, a test value I chose 2. I could pick 2 and uh, plug that thing in there. I get a false statement, therefore it's less than negative 2. So it couldn't have been that part, so it must be in between 0 and 1. Also, this is less and, and it's an and inequality. Now you cannot take a shortcut less and on this one because there were three critical values. All right, so that's it. That concludes our lesson on solving rational equations and inequalities. If you look at the picture there, you have on the left-hand side, you've got an iPhone 4, and on the right-hand side, you've got an iPhone 5. Are these things proportional? No. And again, what I'm doing is I, I'm, I want you to relate rational equations with the word proportion. These are an example where, uh-uh, that's not proportional. How many, look at that, 3,130 email messages? Yikes. Okay. Hey, Rowan pointed that out too. Those iPhones are not proportional. Okay, there's your assignment, and I'll see you in class, folks.